This instructional video lecture is made by Erik Labo and Carl Erik Eriksson, NA3A. To begin with, formal writing is used in academic and scientific settings whenever you want to convey your ideas to a wide audience with many possible backgrounds and assumptions. Unlike casual conversation or emails to friends, formal writing needs to be clear, unambiguous, literal and well structured. This instructional video will explain the uses of formal writing by explaining how to write three different types of text. These are an essay, a review and a formal letter. When writing these types of text and all other formal texts, it is strongly recommended to use linking words such as moreover and furthermore to create a flow throughout the text and therefore make it easier for the reader to understand the writer's thoughts. One should be very careful not to use contractions, such as it's and can't, since it's, it's, it is considered informal, therefore one should use it is and can not. Moreover, one should try to avoid words used in spoken English, for example like and get. Finally, the main point in a formal text is not to use personal pronouns, such as I and we. To begin with, an essay is a form of text where one analyzes and evaluates a topic or issue. This particular topic is presented through a thesis statement and then strengthened with arguments structured in the paragraphs. The basic structure is introduction, where one can find a thesis statement, then the body, with the arguments supporting the thesis statement, and finally the conclusion for a quick summary. Firstly, to write an essay, one will need to start with preparations. Because the essay is uh, connected with a selected topic, the first thing one needs to do is research. Utilize the internet, the academic database and the library. Take notes and become an expert in the topic. Then, when one has a good knowledge base, the essay will require insight, insight of one's own general essay writing brilliance. That means a lot of brainstorming. Think really hard, even meditate, to come up with original insights to write about. Secondly, pick the best idea and pin it down in a clear statement that one can write the entire essay around. The thesis is the main point, summed up in a concise uh, sentence that lets the reader know what topic or issue the essay will deal with and why. It is particularly impossible to write a good essay without a clear thesis. Illegal drug use is determ determinantal because it encourages gang violence. This thesis statement is correct because it is focused on one specific subject and gives the reader the information needed to know what one is writing about and what the paragraphs will support. Drug use is determinantal to people. However, this uh, no, it's not how one should write the thesis statement. It is not focused or clear and it does not give the essential information needed. Thirdly, sketch out the essay before straightway writing it out. Use one line sentences to describe paragraphs and bullet points to describe what each paragraph will contain. Play with the essay's order, map out the structure of the arguments and make sure each paragraph is unified. To begin with, one can start by writing all the paragraphs, making it easier to organize them and then write the introduction and the ending. Each individual paragraph should be focused on a single idea that supports a thesis. When the body will be done, the introduction and conclusion will be easier to write, because after the body is done, one really know what the essay is about. Secondly, when the paragraphs are done, one can move on to the introduction. The introduction should catch the reader's attention, set up the issue, and lead into the thesis. Thirdly, the conclusion will gracefully exit the essay by making some memorable thoughts, perhaps a quotation or an interest twist of logic. Finally, the language is one of the more, most important part. One is not done until the language is polished and corrected. 
Most important when writing a review is to give the reader a clear idea of what the book, movie, musical or ice cream is about and also if it was good or not. There are different types of reviews and one that is very common is a book review. Before starting the writing one should ask oneself some questions. What are the author's viewpoint and purpose? The viewpoint or purpose may be impiled rather than stated, but often a good place to look for what the author says about the purpose and viewpoint is the introduction or preface. What are the author's main points? Two other questions that is good to bring up is in the introduction is what kind of evidence does the author use to prove points? Is the evidence convincing? And how does this book relate to other books on the same topic? The review usually begins with an introduction that lets the reader know what the review will be about. It usually includes the author and title. One should also include a very brief overview of the contents of the book, the purpose or audience for the book, and the reactions and evaluation. Moreover, a review generally moves into a section of background information that helps place the book in context and discusses criteria for judging the book. Next, the review gives a summary of the main points from the book, quoting paraphrasing key phrases from the author. Finally, reviewers get to the heart of their writing, their evaluation of the book. In this section, reviewers discuss a variety of issues. How well the book has achieved its goal, what possibilities are suggested by the book, what the book has left out, how the book compares to others on the subject, what specific points are not convincing, and finally, what personal experience one had related to the subject. It is important to carefully dis distinguish one's views from the author's so that the reader doesn't get confused. Finally, like other essays, book reviews usually ends with a conclusion which ties together issues raised in the review and provide a concise comment on the book. There is, of course, no set formula, but a general rule of thumb is that the first one half to two thirds of the review should summarize the author's main ideas and at least one third should evaluate the book. To begin with, formal letter writing is absolutely one of the most challenging types. When putting it together, often one are addressing a person or organization that are not familiar and the quality of your content, including spelling and grammar, will be strongly reviewed. Furthermore, move on to the structure of the formal letter. This is an example of a general layout for a formal letter. The address of the writer is found in the top right corner. The address to the person one is writing to should be written in the left side, starting below the person's own address. Different people put the date on different sides of the page. One can write the date on the right or the left side, on the line after the recipient's address. Moreover, the greeting in a formal letter will depend on whatever or not one knows the recipient. If the name is unknown, use dear sir or madam. If you know the name, use a title, for example, Mr. and the surname only. An example can be Mr. Anderson. If one does not know the name of the person, end the letter with yours faithfully. If the name is known, end the letter with yours sincerely. The first paragraph should be short and state the purpose of the letter to make an inquiry, complain, request something, etc. The paragraph or paragraphs in the middle of the letter should contain the relevant information behind the writing of the letter. Most letters in English are not very long, so keep the information to the essentials and concentrate on organizing it in a clear and logical manner rather than expanding too much. The last paragraph of a formal letter should state what action you expect the recipient to take, for example, to refund or send information. Finally, when the letter is done, 
proofread the letter and double check the spelling of names, addresses, etc. Make sure the writing is clear and concise. Fix any grammar errors. Essay Firstly, begin the process with research. Utilize the internet, the academic databases and the library. Take notes and become an expert in the topic. Secondly, start the essay by writing all the paragraphs, making it easier to organize them, and then write the introduction and the ending. Each individual paragraph should be focused on a single ID that supports your thesis. Thirdly, when the paragraphs are done, one can move on to the introduction. The introduction should catch the reader's attention, set up the issue, and lead into the thesis. Finally, the conclusion will gracefully exit the essay by making some memorable thoughts, tracing a quotation or an interesting twist of logic. Review. It is good to divide the review into th paragraphs with clear introduction and conclusion. A review should preferably include board crit criticism as well as price. Keep your own opinions to the final paragraphs. Formal letter. The structure of the formal letter is very important. The address of the writer should is found in the top right corner. The address to the person one is writing to should be written in the left side, starting below the person's own address. Moreover, different people put the date on different sides of the page. One can write the date on the right or the left on the line after the recipient's address. Furthermore, the greeting and ending is a bit tricky. If the name is unknown, use dear sir or madam. If you know the name, you can use a title, for example, Mr. and the surname only. If one doesn't know the name of the person, end the letter with yours faithfully, or if the name is known, end the letter with yours sincerely. The first paragraph should be short and state the purpose of the letter, to make an inquiry, complaint, request or something, etc. The last paragraph on the formal letter should state what action you expect the reception to take, to refine, to send information, etc. So I say thank you and you for listening. I hope you enjoyed it what will life be without english or a movie to watch so i say thank you for listening have a good day mr anderson